Well, it's it's 12, 12 o'clock, and thank you, Audrey, for setting this all up. Let's start. We we have some friends from Sweden online, and they would love that we're starting on the minute. So, hi, Marie and Frederick and Daniel. Jen, Jenny's not with us today. She's teaching at the university, so she's got a class starting at the same time. But a very warm welcome, and I've got a, Kia, you would be happy to know that I've got the Swatland management team online, they're listening in today, so Henrik, who is the director at Swatland, has invited his management team to join us, so, and they, they practice a lot of the Toyota way, and the spirit of manufacturing excellence. So for those who are joining, the reason why we have these master classes is simply to share and co-create together in the space of coaching and learning together. And today I'm really pleased to invite a dear friend that I have been walking with and coaching for over two years. And we started off in a commercial transaction around software and it just grew where he knew so much about lean and total quality management, which is the foundation of our coaching that we've been doing for almost 20 years. And so it's my joy to welcome Pierre today. He's been trained by Professor Norman Fall of UCT and he is the Africa lean um, expert. So you, Pierre has done his masters at UCT, and today you, you, he, he's grown beyond that in a lot of his approaches to lean, and combined it with what we are doing in coaching, and has developed some very interesting models, including some amazing software. So, Pierre and. I'm, I'm happy to, to invite um, Carrier, Pierre's daughter, who has who's been piloting. She's been studying as well at UCT. So she's been using the approach that we have been practicing. So, and she will graduate soon, um, having mastered lean coaching. And I, I hope. As an engineer, she'll also become a lean practitioner and you, you continue to use this language. And we also have David Walker, who will be on panel later this today. So Pierre, I'm not gonna take any longer because we have a full day and we, I know, especially with the Swatland team, they restricted to the hours, so we will, the lights will, the load shedding will start at 1 p.m. So over to you, Pierre. Well, well, thank you, Charles, for opening the stage uh, to me to introduce Link Coaching. I've, uh, I've scripted everything, so I'm going to read so that we don't waste any time and, and we can spend more time uh, in the practical and we can spend more time with uh, testimonies from David and also for Q&As later on. So... The tagline for today's masterclass is systematically coaching servant leaders to make their people successful. So let's start with one definition and the focus of this session. A servant leader is a person whose focused drive is to make their people successful. And in particular, at continually self-developing and improving their processes. So the coaching context is that of leadership coaching and business coaching. What I would like to show you is that develop it, developing habits of change will shape the long-term success of a business. And these habits or practice routines are that of coaching and scientific thinking. And we use the scientific method to overcome obstacles and achieve goals. So on the menu today, we first start with the context of the Toyota Kata and online coaching. And I will define the word Kata a little bit later. Then I'll explain the practice of lean coaching. 
as it results in habit forming and identity changes. Next, we have an actual coaching session with one of today's guests. Just pray that it is not you. Um, we then have the privilege of hearing from David Walker, one of the uncommon leader from Common Architecture. And finally, I'm looking forward to your reactions and inputs all that in the next 55 minutes. Okay, so let's get cracking. Let's place Lean uh, Coaching in context. What is the main difference between these two pictures? And you can, you can contribute. Hello. Okay, they, they have different hairstyles. They are different hairstyles? <laughs> Thank you, Francois. The, the one in the middle is really intelligent. <laughs> we we might we might not be assured that the one on the right is alive yet still. <laughs> All right. I was asking about the picture, not the person. <laughs> Someone... They've both got their arms folded. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Thank you, Clive. Someone is, is, came, came to work today. Thank you. But maybe this picture helps you a little bit better. Left or right? Okay, you're going to do an exercise for me. So I would like you to cross your arms. Very simple. I think everybody here I can do that. So just cross your arms. Now, half of humanity is going to cross, like me, with their right hand on top of the left arm. And the other half of humanity is going to put their left hand on their right arm. All right? Can you please try to swap? Can you try to change it from what you usually do? All right? And I just, I just want to hear your reaction. How does it feel? Awkward. It feels awkward. That's the, that's the first word that comes to mind to everybody. It feels awkward. Another reaction? Strange. It's strange. Someone else? I had to really think about how to do the other direction. Like, I had to think. <laughs> Me too. Well, I, I had to practice because in the beginning, I couldn't do it, actually. So in your brain, you have neural pathways that are well-traveled routes in your brain. They are our habits, our established ways of thinking, our feeling and, and doing. Every time you use them, you reinforce these pathways. So if you have been crossing your arms in a certain way for many decades, doing it the opposite way feels awkward because the neural pathways are new. So you create new habits through repetition. So you don't try to change the old habits. You try to create new ones. The new highway will strengthen, the old weaken, and eventually you lose the old habit. This is called neuroplasticity in action. So how do you practice that? So kata is a Japanese word for a practice routine. Kata are structured routines to practice deliberately, especially at the beginning, so the pattern becomes a habit and leaves you with new abilities, like learning to swim, learning to cycle, uh, practicing your swing, or having Zoom uh, master classes. Routines are for learning fundamentals that you can build on. Routines are ways of transferring skills um, and developing shared abilities and mindset um, in, team or, in teams or organizations. All right. Now you know what a kata is and what it is used for. Now let's look at how it is going to help us solve a particular prob uh, problem that we've got at, in, in, in coaching. So we started with this problem. We, as leadership coaches, how do we engage top leadership in the long-term creation of a culture 
of continuous excellence. Um, in other words, how can an organization, its leaders and its people become the very best version of themselves? That's the problem. So for that, to, to the hypothesis that we had to resolve the problem is one, we can use the improvement kata and coaching kata for leadership coaching. In other words, for leaders to build the habit of accountability and systemic engagement with their direct reports. And also we can coach online. Uh, so why? why do you want to coach online? Well, it's to reduce the cost of meeting with clients, to meet more frequently with them, and to beat the virus, obviously. All right, Lean Coaching is a, is a direct application of the practice described of the, in, in the Toyota Kata. So let's look where this Toyota Kata is coming from. So we are going back to the philosophy and framework of managing organizations to create customer satisfaction. And we can go back in time to the Venetians that were building boats in the 16th century, Henry Ford, some of you may know Edward Deming, and others with principles we find in total quality management in the 1980s. PLI coaches are actually influenced by uh, total quality management as Charles introduced us earlier on. And they should, shouldn't be surprised since uh, we've been using it uh, since 2001. What we are talking about is leadership engagement, the strategic process, the famous way to, from now and how, five whys, continuous improvement, PDCA, etc. Back to the roots of uh, uh, Toyota Kata, um, we find the Toyota production system. Taishi Ono was its main architect. This book, uh, was first published in 1988 and is the summary of 55 years of his work. In the 1990s, uh, programs are created to implement these principles, methods, and tools. In South Africa, we've got um, 20 keys, mission-directed work teams, and e-track to name the main, the main programs. And they are still today making a good, even excellent contribution for lean implementations in large organizations. So in 2004, uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Leica accelerates the spreading of lean with the Toyota way. The problem that then emerges is that many organizations worldwide have focused their improvement efforts using the lean tools and techniques learned from Toyota. The problem is, is that much of the improvements are not sustained. So for six years, Mike Rother and its team studied Toyota to try to understand the secret ingredients of the secret sauce. And the first question that they ask, and I quote, what are the unseen managerial routines and thinking that lie behind Toyota's success with continuous improvement and adaptation? But more importantly for us is the second question that was, how can we offer, how can other companies develop similar routines and thinking in the organizations. Because we are not Japanese and we don't necessarily assemble cars. So how is, it, how is that thinking pattern relevant to us? How can we apply it into our organizations here in Africa and in the Western world, for example? Rather, observe, observe that Toyota managers follow the consistent pattern of thinking, processes, and coaching behaviors. He codified it into a, a, a framework uh, that has become known as Toyota Kata. And the first book was published in 2009. I think it's also important to mention Lean Startup, like for example, like, uh, some of our colleagues like Hawken, who's doing uh, Lean Startup and, and uh, in, in incubation and incubates companies. And that's based on the scientific thinking method described in the, the Kata, the improvement Kata, Eric Ries talks also about validated learning as the desired outcome of any experimentation. He also makes reference to the Toyota way. So in 2015, I am trained by Professor Norman Fall from the Lean Institute Africa. He was trained by Mike Rother, um, and he's also mentioned in, in the latest book, uh, the Toyota uh, Kata uh, Practice Guide. That was the third uh, training workshop in Africa back in 2015. 
I run several workshops in Durban and Madagascar and train some of my clients, but the practice was never entrenched. So in March last year, after several months uh, of, of Charles coaching me, at that time, we are in the process of designing an online, coach, on, online coaching framework uh, for uh, PLI. And then we've got COVID. That's when we had the brainwave that it would make sense to use the Kata online and push the frontier of leadership coaching. We call it lean thinking, lean, lean coaching. Since then, I've practiced with my colleagues, some of my clients, and my three children. One of them is here today. Hello, Kiria. So more than 150, possibly 200 sessions later, I'm ready to share the experience with other leadership coaches. Okay, let's talk about the practice itself. How to form a habit. We spoke about neuroplasticity earlier on. Let's go a little bit deeper. A habit is a behavior that has been repeated enough times to become automatic. This is what we do, but every, behind every system of actions is a system of beliefs, your worldview, your self-image, your judgments about yourself and others. This is who you are, that's your identity. The most practical way to change who you are, what you believe, is to change what you do. True behavior change is identity change. So the more you repeat a behavior, the more you reinforce the identity associated with that behavior. The focus is on who you wish to become, and this will define what you will achieve. So the outcome, the goal, um, the goals or challenges are what you wish to achieve. What is important is the direction of the change. Now, the outcome, will look after itself if the identity changes. Behavior leads performance. And that's why we talk about key behavior indicators that are leading the key performance indicators. Let's take examples of habit forming that transform organizations. All right. In the case of, of leaders who believe that they are being transformed into servant leaders, their behavior is to coach their people. The outcome of that coaching is a thinking people. All right. In the case of the people of the organization who think of themselves as becoming problem solvers, their behavior is to improve their processes. And the outcome are simpler and safer processes that perform better, faster, and cheaper. So, what are some of the practice routines that change people and leadership identities? Will I explain next the improvement kata? All right. So if you want to, to do lean coaching or the improvement kata, there's only four keywords in the jargon that you need to know. All right. Four definition. The first one is the challenge. And the challenge is the general direction where a company, a division, a department, an individual, a team are going. It's, it's a set of long-term objectives. They are time-bound and they are specific. So in the case of a company, it could be the breakthrough objectives in 36 months time. In the case of a team on the short, short floor, it could be a short-term improvement that would take, let's say, two months. That's the challenge. The next one is what we call the target condition. It's the short-term objectives. It's where we're going in the next two days, two weeks, two months, probably not more than three months, all right? So it's shorter in the future. And when we meet our target condition, we are coming one step closer to the challenge. The next thing is that between today and our target condition, there are obstacles. There's something in the way to our short-term objectives, to our short-term goals, which stops us from moving forward. That's the obstacle. Call that an issue, but it's something in the way to the tight condition that we eliminate through experimentation. Why? Because we don't know what we don't know. So we're going to experiment our ways to eliminate the obstacle. And the last one is the threshold of knowledge. 
it's the, po the point where we don't know what we don't know. You can't see further in the future. All right, with those four definitions, let's, let's look at the first practice routine that will develop the identity of a problem solver. It is called the improvement kata. And this is the cycle of improvement. We determine where we want to go. That's the challenge. It can be a personal challenge, such as in 24 months, I'll run a marathon. <clears throat> or it could be a business one, for example, will increase new products sales to 20% of total sales in 18 months. From the outset, the challenge seems almost impossible to achieve. We are challenging organizations. We are challenging people. But as Lewis Carroll uh, would, uh, would say, if you don't know where you are, uh, if you don't know where you're going, every road will lead, lead you there. So we need, to, we need to first understand where we are now. That this is the current condition or the actual condition or your, 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 present, your present situation. And we're going to define the, the next short-term goal that will connect the current condition to our challenge, it is called the next target condition. Two weeks, two months in the future. Now we make our way towards the target condition. We constitute the future, there is a limit to our knowledge. So we push through this, our, our threshold of knowledge every time we take the next step towards the target condition. And on our journey, we're going to find unforeseen issues. The, they are the obstacles. We don't go around the obstacles, we eliminate them. And since we, since we don't usually have a solution, we have to experiment until the obstacle, the obstacle is removed. Now, I know that some managers are starting to get edgy when you use the word experimentation. Now, we don't do that silly. We don't improvise, we experiment. We set up boundaries in terms of whatever we're going to experiment is safe for the customer, is safe for our people on one side, and on the other side, we're going to make sure we're not going to break the bank. Let's do it quickly and cheap. We want to learn. The learning is going to be validated by facts. This is the scientific method. We plan the hypothesis to overcome the obstacle. We do the experiment. We check or study the results so that we can create learning. And this is how we push our threshold of knowledge towards the target condition. So uh, here we go. So when we reach it, we decide on the next target condition. And again, until we meet the challenge. And then we start again with a new challenge. There's no end to continuous improvement. There's no end to learning. Actually, it isn't that simple. And this is how the reality looks like. It's not a nice staircase. It's messy because the future is messy and the path to our target condition is messy. We don't know what, don't, what we don't know. Unknown obstacles await us. And we don't see them until we experiment at our current knowledge threshold. It's a bit like climbing the stair up to the attic. It's dark. You have your phone torch light on. You can only see the first few steps. And you go up. You now see the shoes that your son, your son left on the seventh step. You didn't know the obstacle was there until you climbed up some steps. The improvement kata gives us confidence that we will achieve our target condition and eventually the challenge. We know how to do it using the plan, do, check, uh, and adjust cycle. We progress through continual experimentation, and that's the PDCA. This transform our identity. We become problem solvers. Sounds exciting, eh? So. The important, the improvement kata looks like a lot of work. How does an employee can actively reach for a professional goal? That is a challenges and associated target condition. In the daily work um, rush, the default mode for any employee is usually to work on urgent operational matters. They are stuck in the urgency trap. There isn't much time or time at all to focus on improvement activities that will enable employees to achieve professional and even personal goals. 
there is little appetite to overcome the difficulty of learning new skills that will lead to process improvements when they are facing ongoing pressure. Um, and we're talking about all, all those monkeys that are clinging on their backs. Unless they are both an incentive and ongoing support. The only person who can continually support the learner to develop a scientific thinking mind, guess who it is? It's the manager. There's nobody else. It's not a consultant, the facilitator, or the HR people. It's her coach. If that person coach is her uh, uh, manager. With the coaching kata, the coach will support the learner to overcome um, uh, uh, mistakes and, and, and discomfort and, and setback. Um, when it comes to learning new skills and dealing with real life obstacles. Now, you remember crossing of your arms. That's awkward, isn't it? So as the learner, the coach, he learns the improvement kata, it's awkward, it's uncomfortable, and it's a good sign. It means that you're learning, you're busy rewiring your neural pathways. And that applies to the coach herself because it's new to her. It's painful, and that's why not many people have the courage and, and the fortitude to actually keep going and learn those new skills. How's your uh, golf drive? Um, the coach will provide a, a pro procedural guidance to follow the kata, to accompany the coachee to achieve challenging real target conditions on her way to become a thinking person. The coach doesn't do the work for the coachee and he's, she's not there to give up solutions. Otherwise, there's no um, empowerment, there's no autonomy. So giving people a certain degree of control over their work fulfills their need for freedom and provides opportunity um, uh, to, to, um, for taking joy in work. And I forgot to say is that the coach is there to provide accountability uh, in short intervals. So we want to repeat often and we want to establish a cadence of accountability, which is one of, of, of the secrets of transforming organizations and continuous improvement. All right, so we want joy in work. Do you have joy in work in your organizations? I want to also mention that as a footnote that a coaching kata is specific to the improvement kata. And I'm not talking about a general mentoring practice. All right, so I'm nearly finished on, on, on the theory. I just want to look at from the coach herself. So. We as PLI coaches, but also us coaching the managers to become coaches themselves. What is the benefit to them? And the first one um, is, is, the mind, is the mind part. So they can grasp a deeper understanding of the reality and issues that the coachee, the learner, the subordinate faces right down to the shop floor. The management systems of the organization, each processes and dependencies with other functions or division, how all those things are connecting together. The various risks and opportunities for the business. That's the benefit for the coach. And she will also develop a fact and risk-based thinking. So we know how to take some calculated risks because we can experiment uh, safely. Um, now, and finally, that's the problem of senior management, how they can juggle um, the zooming in and out of um, strategic, systemic, and operational focus. Right, so now the hard part. The coach learns to empower and leads with authority and humility. Now, authority, uh, it's due to the better decision-making for both the coach and the coachee, your alignment to the coachee goals, to the business objectives, and her willing subordin subordination based on mutual respect. Now, humility, it's because the leaders, they learn to say, listen, I don't know the answer. Let's go and experiment. Um, she reinforces her identity as a servant leader uh, that makes the time and learn to make her subordinate successful. In summary, with the coaching kata, the coach contributes to intentionally develop a culture of respect and continual um, uh, improvement. And as the leader developed and sustains the habit of coaching her team, she becomes a servant leader. All right, so now, enough explanation, let's run a practical example. So Kiria is my older daughter. She's one of the last 
she's, she's on the last leg of a clinical engineering degree. She's currently writing a thesis and we meet twice a week for 20 to 30 minutes of coaching. Sometimes it's more when there's some training or some brainstorming. In this coaching cycle, we started in July. Her challenge is to graduate and remain sane. The challenge is called intact and graduated. She has a tendency to be very anxious and the focus is for her to establish time management routines to cope with the workload and have a balanced life. So one of the early target conditions was for her to measure and analyze how she was spending her time, then define the routines she wanted to establish. She then tested them on her last group project. It was, a design, it was to design a plant to recycle acid mine water. The outcome of the project met her expectations and she never freaked out. So now from the learnings, she's applying the same habits in her thesis. What you can notice here is that there is an overall coaching project, but each target conditions can be a project of its own. For example, Kiaya run a project for design project and currently for a thesis. So you can use any suitable template from Lean, Six Sigma, or project management, uh, anything, uh, any template which is suitable, suitable for the particular uh, target condition. In the business context, the, the hypothesis is that the employee is aligned to the business objectives in one-on-one -on -one project with her uh, leader stroke coach and various projects or innovations are run on, uh, on a need basis to achieve the overall uh, individual objectives or the departmental objectives and eventually the business objectives. All right, enough intro. Kiria, can you show us briefly what your coaching environment looks like? And you're going to have to, uh, to share your screen. Hi, I'm just going to share my screen quickly. Um, okay, can you guys see? Yes. Okay. All right, so this is my coaching space. Um, on the side, you can see I have some other spaces over here, but those are all my projects. Um, but I just want to quickly show you, so the challenge intact and graduated here is just a description of the challenge itself. And then here is just an evaluation section, um, which we'll do at the end um, when the challenge is completed. Um, and it also follows the same format in the target conditions. Um, I just want to quickly say that I really enjoy these evaluations. Um, maybe it's my control freak side, but I like to I like to reflect and I like to see what I can learn and then apply in the next season. Um, so here you have your target conditions um, and then obstacles and then the next steps. And then here coaching notes, which I find very important to, you know, um, keep track of your thoughts because so much can happen in a week and it's nice to go back and see what is happening, what you thought the previous week. Um, and here, this is the way the good stuff is. This is where you can see what you've already done. Um, it makes you feel very like accomplished um, and what you have delivered previously. Um, and here, these are related articles where there are things that you always wanna refer back to and keep editing and adding to. Um, and so, yeah. That is where I keep these. Um, if I might just quickly show you this one thing. My dad was saying I was interested in developing routines um, to meet, um, yeah, to be more productive. Um, so for me, I made a personal effectiveness matrix and I was able to like basically mind dump everything, how I wanted things to go. Sorry, it's very wordy. I do like to write a lot. Um, but yeah, so that was that. I think I've given just so you guys can see the theory my dad's been saying, how it can look. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I think I'm ready for a quick, quick coaching, coaching session, Dad. All right. Thanks, Kia, for that uh, high altitude view on, of, of your workbench, the, the place where, where we meet uh, online and we use, um, we use this particular format that follows the, the, the improvement kata. All right, Kiria, what is the target condition that we are going to work on today? Um, currently, I'm actually in between two target conditions. Um, like here, you can see there's this thing called thesis project with a question mark for due date, because that's the next thing. 
Um, but I just closed a few weeks ago my design project um, as a target condition. Okay, so uh, did you have any um, obstacle uh, that are actually stopping you from uh, from uh, filling in up that uh, I mean documenting um, or defining this new target condition? Yeah, um, like here you can see my next step was to draft this target condition, but then as I was drafting it, I came across obstacle. Um, one of the routines that I'd set in my thesis and my design project was to log my time um, to see if I was fulfilling my eight hour workday load that I wanted to do. So I wasn't using it. And so I was like, why am I not wanting to use it? So um, I logged that as an obstacle. Right. Can you show us that obstacle and what you, sure. you are, you've planned to experiment to overcome it? Okay, so like I said, I'm not logging my time in um, my spreadsheet, and which is weird. I love spreadsheets, so why do I not want to log my time? Um, All right, what did you so plan as your last step? My last step was to reflect on what exactly bothers me. Uh, like, what is why was I not logging my time? All right, what, what did you want to learn? What did you expect to learn? Um, I just wanted to find out the root cause of the problem. So I wanted to identify what was not making me log my time. All right. So you applied your mind. You, you actually did that step. Mm -hmm. And what actually happened? Mm -hmm. So I did my reflection. Um, and I just reevaluated the purpose of why I wanted to log my time, which was to keep track of the hours that I was putting in. Um, and then I thought back, OK, cool. I was doing it for my design project. Um, but then I realized I wasn't planning my time very well because I'd spent too much time on some things. Um, so now I've realized like what in my reflection, I could see that I didn't like seeing previously that I wasn't spending my time on what I wanted it to be spent on. All right. So what did you learn? Um, so I think the, the problem like I've written here, I had the perception or expectation that by logging my time, some miracle would happen and I would just spend my time on the right things. So now here I've just said I've been subconsciously avoiding it because I want my time planning skills to have improved already. I kind of want to skip to mm. the end. Yeah. Okay. Do, um, do you think do you think you've eliminated your obstacle yet? No, because now looking at this, I can see that um, the real problem is actually me not knowing how to plan my time. So I'm like, okay, cool, I need to do this task, but I don't set the right time allocation for it, which is a problem. So now for right. me, I think my next step is right, this very vague. It might need some refining, but like for me, it's just looking to ways to plan my time better. So like going to the internet, finding, talking to people, to put together a list of tools or solutions and how to plan time wisely. Like I, said, right. I think it's so, quite vague. So you think, you think this experiment is going to help you eliminate that particular obstacle, which was something was bothering you with regards to logging your time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like what was bothering me, I guess it, what was bothering me has been answered. Like I didn't like the fact that I wasn't planning my time wisely, but if I really want to tackle this obstacle, the point is to resume logging my time because I've decided right. I want to keep logging. So maybe now this experiment, looking at tools or the solutions to plan time more wisely, maybe that'll be a step closer. Tell me, you've got already uh, the experience of your design project and yeah. um, you've got already some of the routines there that you've mm -hmm. established at the time that you said were actually very useful to you. Mm -hmm. uh, don't you think it's a, it would be a good thing to actually go back to them also? Okay, yeah. I mean, I did review them the other day, last week it was, just yeah. And I decided that I wanted to keep all of those routines. So all right. So you so, so you think that this is not sufficient. You want to actually know more. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So but when when can we see uh, the result of your experiment? Um next session. On Thursday? Yeah. Is that good for you? Okay. Yeah. Right. So so that, that's good. So for so for, for the audience, that was pretty much the orthodox. Uh, um, coaching kata. Uh, there's a set of standard questions. Uh, there's five main questions and and uh, and and a subset of four uh, that I've I've pretty much followed quite accurately. Uh, and now we're moving on to uh, a bit of housekeeping to make sure that all that learner learner um, knowledge and learnings are actually being captured 
and we can get a good track record of, of the progress that KI is going to is, is making. So uh, for uh, timekeeping sake, uh, Kiria would actually log, uh, she's uh, logged uh, the next step that she's already mm -hmm. documented in, in, in the obstacle, and she will be making an entry herself in the coaching notes. And that, that closes the session. So, so those sessions um, uh, can be 10 to 20 minutes. Sometimes we do some brainstorming, so it can, it can go on for maybe one hour, to one and a half hour, but the coaching portion mm. itself uh, shouldn't be lasting more than uh, 20 minutes. Um, last night, um, I coached my, my son and he finished his trials for his, his metric, which is the, the senior certificate in, in South Africa. He's in his last year. And now he's, he's in last week of school, and then he's, he's revising and he's writing, writing his senior certificate. Um, and the power utility here in South Africa uh, pulled a, a blackout on us. So we did uh, coaching by candlelight last night, no computer, nothing, just having a good chat with my son and the coaching session following the kata was six minutes. So it can really be efficient because it's a standard way of coaching. And it works apparently because they keep on coming back to me. Right, so I'm going to, to thank you, Kiria, so much for showing some, some real life uh, coaching. Um, and now what I'm going to do, uh, we're going to move to the next item. And the next item is looking from a business uh, viewpoint. Uh, and we're going to, to hand over to Common Architecture, Mr. David Walker. I'm going to make a brief introduction and then David will share his screen. And he's going to show his own platform. Um, uh, that uh, is where he's, he's developing his own uh, lean management system, and he's going to make a short presentation on what they're doing. So we're talking about an architectural practice in Durban, which got local and global exposure in Europe in particular, and they build um, holiday resorts, high high end uh, high end holiday resorts in in places like Tenerife. Um, Egypt, the Maldives, and also they redo chains of hotels in Germany. So they're not just local, they're also international. Um, and they've got a 200 year vision. Uh, David will speak a little bit more about that. We've been working together for three years and we've been co-learning, co-creating David and I in terms of developing uh, lean coaching together. And right now they're working on, on a new project, a new challenge, they want to integrate lean coaching into the daily life of the architects um, to continually improve the value created by deep work. Now, only architects can actually use this kind of wording. Um, I didn't invent it, but it's a good opportunity for you to learn more about um, uh, insightful and, and uh, trailblazing leaders in, in other um, in different in industries. So over to you, David. Okay, thank you, Pierre. Thanks for having me along. Thanks to everybody else. Yeah, as Pierre says, my goal here is to show you how we use the routine of, of lean coaching in our business here in Durban. And I want to particularly uh, show you how it helps us to maintain focus. It helps us with maintaining focus. And I want to show you how we do that currently. And then hopefully, if we've got time, also how we want to expand it and use it in the future. And that focus, uh, which is important to us, uh, can be at a company level, as I will show you now first, but it can also be uh, for managing projects or processes. And then as I want to show you at the end, perhaps most importantly for manage, most importantly to us for managing, managing customer engagement. So the big thing for us is focus. So let's begin uh, with the company level focus. Um, as you will have already heard, um, the first question in the kata, in the routine, is what is the challenge or what is the goal? What is the challenge that we are setting ourselves? And uh, when I and my business partner, Mark, uh, before we started the company, uh, before we began working together, uh, a number of years ago, we were sitting on the banks of the Kierbooms River uh, down in the Southern Cape, and we gave ourselves this challenge, which hopefully you can see on the screen, and that was to create a 200-year company that meets the needs of its neighbor through improvements to the built environment. So that's our company challenge, to create a 200-year uh, company uh, that meets the needs of its neighbor <laughs> through improvements to the built environment. 
Uh, and then back in Durban, a few weeks later, uh, we soon learned and discovered that certain things, certain conditions might need to be in place to allow us to move towards that challenge. And one of the central conditions that we've been working on uh, establishing from very early on is the ability to do work. We want the conditions under which we can do deep work. Uh, and that's a term that we've taken from Carl Newport's book, which has the same name. Uh, and Newport says that deep work is the ability, deep work is the ability to focus without distraction on a cognitively demanding test. Deep work is necessary to wring every last drop of value out of your current intellectual capacity. It's necessary to wring every last drop of value out of your current intellectual capacity. And we love those ideas and they're really applicable to our business. But my goal is not to convince you that the deep work is important, but just to show you, uh, to use it as an illustration, uh, conceptually at least, of a target condition on a road to achieving a bigger goal. Um, so having that as, as an idea of a target condition without knowing the terminology at that stage, uh, we began trying to remove obstacles to deep work. Um, and the chief obstacle we found to deep work was distraction. Uh, and we started to remove that. Um, and Mark and I agreed when we were just working together alone, just the two of us in our office. Our first step was that we would not interrupt each other before 11 a.m. each day we decided we had an uninterrupted period between 8 and 11 a.m. That was the first obstacle that we removed um, on our road towards deep work. And we've grown that and developed it um, as we've added to our team. We're still quite a small team, but now we divide our day. Uh, the structure of our day is into two deep work slots on the extreme. So we remove the obstacle of not knowing when you're meant to do deep work. We do it in the morning and we do it in the afternoon. And then we have a period in between where we concentrate the distractions, the necessary distractions that we need to have. And that's around coordination, alignment with the customer, um, uh, seeking help and collaboration, uh, which, can, which can also be a distraction. And to be honest, it can also fit into the deep work slots. But uh, this has been a big focus of our company over the past few years, removing obstacles to deep work. So without knowing, uh, actually on knowing the kata, uh, we were already practicing it. And then over the past few months, Pierre has uh, introduced us to the terminology of his coaching routine. So giving us a terminology around uh, what we were already doing and uh, bringing, bringing a focus to it. And the nice thing about that for me is that it has given us a positive, um, a positive agenda in working towards our target condition. And perhaps it was part of my personality at the start where I was, I really wanted to get rid of distractions. I wanted everyone to behave themselves and not interrupt. Um, and it became a bit negative perhaps. And uh, the nice thing about the, the coaching routine is that it's a positive, the, goal, the eyes are always looking forward to the goal. The eyes are always looking forward to the next target condition. And we're positively, when we deal with obstacles, we're looking at it in the positive light of removing them so that we can move uh, onwards and upwards. So that's been exciting for us. Um, we had another, I had another bit of a mental breakthrough recently, um, listening to a podcast um, by Michael Lewis. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a series on coaching and I haven't listened to it all, but in the first podcast, He's uh, talking about the idea of coaching and how it's developing and how it's becoming more commonplace. And one example that he used was uh, Roger Federer, a tennis player who um, at the peak of his powers was the, the best tennis player in the world. And he was pointing out that um, even Roger, who was the best, Federer, who was the best, had more coaches than anyone. And that the most successful people in the world were surrounding themselves with coaches and increasing the gap between them and everybody else. So that, um, so, so to date, uh, the current condition is that uh, Pierre has been coaching me uh, twice a week, and I've been loosely coaching uh, the team through um, process improvement projects every fortnight. So that's the current, the current condition in terms of uh, coaching. 
Um, but now our next step is to roll that out to everybody to try and take advantage of this idea of coaching and this methodology that we have for it. Um, so that's, that is our, our next challenge um, to roll out coaching uh, to the team in order to um, further entrench and yeah, ma maximize the benefit of our deep work slots. And we're not quite sure how that's going to work in practice, um, when it's going to be, how long it's going to be, um, but we know we want to do it. And one thing that we are quite sure about is that we don't want uh, professional coaching. We don't want Pierre to be coaching everybody, but we want to develop a culture um, where we're all coaching each other and being coached on a regular basis. Um, so that's our, that's our next challenge and our next steps. Um, one other thing that I did want to talk about, and I think, I think I'm not going to have time, so I'm not going to go into it in any detail. It's just uh, I've been reflecting recently on uh, Eli Goldratt and the goal and the critical chain, which I'm sure many of you will be familiar with. Um, and I, I, I was trying to work out um, what is our constraint in our projects? Um, and according to the critical chain, I hope this, it'll be obvious in one minute why I'm, why I'm explaining this, but the, the critical chain explains that the constraint on a project is always time. The constraint on a project is always time. And I've been reflecting on what is our constraint. And we're, what on our projects, the bulk of the time is spent on uh, waiting for customer feedback and suitable customer engagement. And I could explain that, but I don't have time. Um, but I wanted to illustrate how the CATA is going to be useful to us in dealing with that. Um, so if, if our constraint in our projects is customer engagement, if we're able to develop a coaching uh, Kata and a routine with our customers, it will help to identify the constraints um, by identifying where the obstacles are to us making progress towards our goals. Um, the Kata will then also allow us to subordinate our other, the other steps in our process to that constraint. And then it will also, uh, through repetition, force us to elevate the constraint and focus on the problem of uh, of elevating the constraints and and getting more throughput through that so uh i want to share that because it's on my mind sorry for squeezing it in here uh but but we uh we're really enjoying the and, and fundamentally i think pierre's right that the critical thing is that the change in behavior leads to a change in identity which changes our way of thinking about these things so the kata then becomes the, so this this problem of my constraint um the kata and scientific thinking becomes the obvious, uh, or certainly the first port of call uh, when I try to uh, try to come to solving. So I hope that's helpful. And um, thanks very much, Pierre. Back to you. Wow. So here we go. We spoke about lean startup, lean, and now we've got the theory of constraints. All that in um, in one hour. Uh, that's that's quite uh, potent. Well done, David. Um, well, I wasn't expecting that, David, and it just pleases me to see how, how far you, you and, and Mark and Common Architectures have grown over the years. Um, so yeah, uh, David and I, we've been uh, interacting for three years, and we, we started to experiment with the, the, the coaching kata probably around June last year. Right, now I would like to open up the, the floor to you guys, and uh, we still have a few minutes, and I'm probably going to hand over to, to Adri uh, to, to facilitate um, the, the the rest of the of the of the session. Um, thank you, Pia. Um, yes, if anyone has any questions, comments, um, you're welcome to just unmute yourself and jump onto the floor. All right. Pierre? Yes. Alistair. Yes, Alistair. I'm particularly um, interested in hearing about the scientific thinking 
and maybe just to expand a little bit around that I think it was on the slide where you had the managers as coach it was one of the first bullets there thank you yes so thank you uh, Alistair so the, the scientific thinking has been there all along since um, uh, Deming introduced PDSA um, in the late 1940s. Um, so every, every time we talk about continuous improvement, we talk about uh, the Deming's will or the will of continuous improvement. We're talking about um, uh, PDCA, but that's the scientific thinking itself. Um, and maybe I can really go back to, uh, to that uh, PDCA story here. Um, Show you that's the will of improvement. Um, where would that be? The, the scientific thinking is basically saying, um, I've got a hypothesis, I've got a, I've got a question, and this uh, question can't be answered unless I experiment. So in our case, we say we've got a particular obstacle that's stopping us from reaching a particular target, uh, a part particular near-term ob objective. Um, so we, because we don't know the future um, and things are new, we want to establish, we want to do something about it. So we're going to make a plan. And that plan is to say, if, if we do that particular action, um, then uh, we will learn um, and on how we we understand the problem deeply um, and if that particular action is going to actually eliminate that obstacle but from the outset we don't know it because we've never done that before um, so we're going to set up an experiment that's the planning phase and we do the experiment once we've done the experiment we've got a particular outcome and that's when the scientific method comes into place, that we're going to check the result against the hypothesis that we had in the beginning. Uh, actually, the, the, before we spoke about the PDCA, it was called the PDSA, and S stood for study, because it was really the scientific method, is to study the outcome of an experiment. And the difference between the outcome and the hypothesis, what you were expecting, the difference between the two, that gap is a new learning. You didn't know it before. What Eric Ries talks about is uh, validated learning. When we, we now are deliberate in terms of trying to understand a particular problem. And in the case, for example, of the Lean Startup is you say, we've got an assumption that our customers want to buy that particular product. It's just a, I believe, I believe is a hypothesis. And by experimenting, we're going to transform the I believe into the I know because we validated that learning. That's the scientific method. And then we can start to actually plan for the next experiment based on that learning. So the focus of the kata is totally to learn, but to learn to improve and to improve, to actually achieve goals that are good, good for the person, uh, the, the managers, and over time helps uh, businesses to navigate through uncertain terms and, and, and remain successful and sustainable over a very period of time. Is it helpful, Alistair? Thank you, Pierre. Absolutely. Thank you. Someone else? Um, we we are at at one o'clock, Charles. Do you have any closing comments? Well, I I know people are going to start to sign off, um, and. What, what I would like to do is, if you have questions, to post it in the chat as we close, or you can email it directly to myself or Audrey, and then we will take it up with Pierre and send it to Pierre, he'll send it to you. Pierre, maybe you can also just post your email address in the chat. Sure. Um, Right. We, David, David will be pleased to know we have another architect who has also done coaching, is Rudy Buerta. And so, hi Rudy. I 
I trust this was interesting for you. And we, we've got people from similar industries. We've got Maria from the manufacturing industry in Sweden, and we had in wood, and we had the probably the biggest wood factory in South Africa online earlier, the entire management team. Um, so it's lovely that there's We've got manufacturing, we've got architecture, we've got design, we've got a lot of coaches on today. And um, please post your comments. Um, Rudy, I don't know if you have any uh, comment from the architectural side um, or any questions to Pierre. Yeah, it was it, it, it was interesting for me that, uh, that the guy from Common Architecture kind of went after distraction because um, it, is, it is probably one of the the one of the biggest kind of stumbling blocks uh, in terms of uh, any design or creative process is distractions. It, it really cuts across all of that. And I think that's the, the biggest fight we have in all of our offices and environments, especially with the younger uh, staff members coming in um, with the level of distractions we are dealing with constantly with our devices and phones and emails and everything else. So um, it's definitely something that I've taken note of um, and it's something that I think we're all struggling with and the way it's been set out by peer and uh, with the entire process um, it's uh, it's been very helpful thank you thanks really well Pierre time I know people are going to start signing up some have already had to leave but thank you Pierre and Carrier and uh, David for being part of today and just sharing so openly uh, we, we've all, every time, even when I tune in and listen to PI, I learn something extra. And I want to encourage you, you saw the, the titles of all the books. Please continue engaging us. Ask any questions that you want. And Pierre is an encyclopedia of lean and coaching. So please do contact him. And we do this once a month. Our purpose in prowess is to raise a righteous standard of leadership in the world. And we're never going to do it without the qualities of servant leadership. And I like how Pierre interprets it. It's the servant leader is to make their people successful. That's at the heart of everything we do, is to make others successful. And in coaching, that's why we coach you. Today was more focused on the tools more than our ideology or our philosophy. Um, today was really about the tools and how you can apply the tools to raise a standard of leadership. And you know, it's essential. Without tools, we, we're going to struggle to make progress. Have the wrong tools and you'll be unsuccessful. And I like what Henry Thoreau said. We become the tools of our tools we eventually become that tool. And that's through continuously practicing or doing the kata over and over and over. So from my side, thank you to all those who tuned in, all the coaches. Thank you, Audrey, for hosting today and Pierre, Carrier and David. We look forward to next month. If you want to continue, just drop us a note and we'll add it to the database so that you'll get the um, timeless reminder of the next masterclass. So have a great week further. And we were talking about distraction. I'm off to the dentist for an extraction. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so have, have a great afternoon further. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.